prostrations. St. Paisius in his book, Peri Prosipi, or On Prayer, talks about the value of prostrations. He says, you know, you many people in the world have special gyms. I think he calls them Scandinavian gyms. Writing in the early 90s, the gym culture wasn't what it is today yet at that point. Only like a small percentage of the population went to gyms, really. People exercised outdoors. Um, you know, everyone went to the gym, that's for sure. He said, people of the world have these gyms, but we have prostrations, we monks. And uh, then he works his, you know, he, he talks for a couple of pages on the benefits of prostrations, how they help one to go, uh, they, they aid the beginning of prayer, um, how they keep their, their stomach f f um, natural, he says. They remove unnatural shapes of the abdomen. Uh, they prevent arthritis. I left the book at work um, in its in the English version, um, so I'm just going off the top of my head. But these are the things that are being said. So I just say to myself, maybe it's time to revisit the benefits of the prostrations and save myself significant moolah every month at the gym. <laughs> You know, um, sig significant cost of going to the gym every month. Is the gym really so effective and so beneficial? Does it lead one into prayer? I think it has, probably has its place. You know, we're all different. But is it set up in the modern world to lead one into prayer or actually to lead one away? We're all different. We'll need to assess that. Um, but, yeah, the value of prostrations. It, as a f It's interesting when St. Paul says in the Bible, physical exercise profits, profiteth little, but exercising godliness is of great benefit. I think that's First Timothy or Second Timothy, one of the pastoral letters of Paul. I remember Father Zacharias saying, with the saints, there is no dualism between body and soul, body and spirit. But we, if we're not saints, if we're not saints, he said, there is this polarity, there is this tension that the more we invest in the body, it will mean, to an extent, the less we're invested in the soul and the spirit. So if I start obsessing over big biceps and triceps and, you know, I want a certain look, etc., etc., guaranteed my prayer life may well dry up at some stage. I'm just saying. Um, or my desire to be at church might dry up because I have a, a growing desire to be at the gym instead so there's almost like an inverse proportion thing going on who knows as well hitting the gym big style or you know doing loads of exercise can also put, rip a hole in the in the fasting because you start telling yourself well i can't fast because i've got this exercise regime i've got to give the body its energy and its fuel and blah blah and the soul is becoming slowly atrophied, perhaps. So, just a few ideas. I refer the reader, I refer the listener to the English version of this book, On Prayer by St. Paisius, where he talks far more eloquently on the benefits of prostration.